Now we're going to do range and point maps. Now this is when you want to narrow your search to one specific bird. Let's say that, um, again, you're looking for the Pythonotary Warbler, and you want to, it's the only bird you have left on your life list is Pythonotary Warbler, and you've got to find it before, you know, it's, it's your bucket list is to find the Pythonotary Warbler. So this is going to help you narrow down your search to that particular warbler. Again, we'll type in PROW for Prothonotary Warbler. If you gain anything from this video, you know that the banding code for Prothonotary Warbler is PROW. <laughs> okay, um, and this is where we're looking for year round. We can, right now we can do year round, all years, just so it can show us where, um, where in the world we're going to look for. Um, but we know from all of our other data collection, uh, you know, going through the bar grass and the line grass is the best time to look for them. So we, we, we know from this here that we need to look on the eastern half of the United States, okay? So that way we know we don't have to go to Alaska to look for Prothonotary Warbler. We just, need, we just need to go to Ohio or some other state. Uh, but uh, as you see, all this information over here, um, we don't know how old this information is. It says year-round to all years. Uh, for all we know, the Prothonotary Warblers may have moved from the East Coast and are now on the West Coast. So let's go uh, to the past 10 years. And that is a good sample size. So we'll set that date range. And again, all this gray right here is where people have reported, have made reportings to eBird. And if you look over here in this graph, this shows you the frequency. Uh, zero being uh, very rarely has it been reported, uh, continuing on up. And so you look at this graph, just just looking at it from, from right here with the big blue purple blobs, you know that this area right in here is going to be a good area to find one. Also this area right in here. Um, but we'll zoom in. So it, but notice still in the past 10 years there's been some stuff reported here. Um, right now it's... June, okay. So let's and, and and from our pre from the previous stuff where we've looked at the bar grass and stuff like that, we know that we need to look, you know, through like May and June and and, and those areas to look for that. So let's go down to the current year where we're concerned about what's been reported this year, you know. So that so that way we can we can really plan our trip and our vacation to current data. And again, there's the gray. Um, and where it's been reported. Okay, we know in March, or we know in May, so see, you can you can change this year. Okay, let's just do for, let's, let's say we're planning for 2014, okay? So we set our date for 2013, which would be this year, and we want to go through March and May. We're not concerned about year-round. We want to know what's happening in March and May. Let's say March through May, um, or even we can set it for May. Let's just do that. May to May. Uh, in May is the biggest week in American birding up on Lake Erie at McGee Marsh. Uh, so we're planning on going there, but uh, we're planning on traveling, so we want to uh, maybe stop at a location before we get there and see if we can find a prothonotary warbler. So we'll set that day, date range for May. So this is, how, this is how precise you can get the data now. Slow internet. Come on. There we go. Okay. So now, see, all this extra data is gone. There's no data here that uh, of, of places where that showed prothonotary warblers, but now it's not showing it because we've narrowed down our data to to basically last month. Okay. And, and again, we're planning our trip for next year. Um, you also notice that all this data is gone, and there's a few spots here. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Okay, McGee, and another thing is, is the McGee Marsh is right in this area right here, okay? It's in Ohio, so we can narrow down our location instead of the internet into the United States. We'll just type in Ohio. There we go. 
have to wait for it to refresh. So now what it's doing is it's narrow, narrowing it down to just the state of Ohio and the surrounding area. And you can see in May that there, there's a lot of people that report here in Ohio, Columbus, Dayton, Cincinnati, but not a lot of reporting here and in the mountainous region. Um, that's another thing you can look for this data is just where people are that report. Okay. Now here's here's a good thing here, uh, to the, according to this scale here, um, this area right in here is a very good. It's it's got a 40 to 100 percent chance of finding a prothonotary warmer there, in the parts north. Um, so you know this is going to be a really good area to find that prothonotary warbler. Also up in here in the Cleveland Akron area, Akron area, there's a couple of places, but. McGee Marsh is right here, and you're coming right through Columbus, so this will be a really good place to find one. So we'll just go ahead and zoom in on that area. Instead of typing in, we'll just double-click right here. And just double-click in, just like you would do on uh, Google Maps or something like that. We'll just continue to zoom in. Um, you can also use this bar up here zoom in and what this is showing you right now is a street map but you can also use or a terrain map but you can also use a street map but the terrain map shows all the streets and stuff like that so you can plan your route to get there uh, so here's the here's the hot all the areas where they've they've reported prothonotary warblers um, so let's just let's just click on a location here uh, that's that's one of the hot spots that I've talked about earlier. These are hot spots, the ones with the little fire spots. It's where a birder has said that it's a good place to bird. And then um, this is a personal location where a certain birder has gone. Okay, here's Charles Mombasi again. Here's his checklist, and he's also created a note about prothonotary warblers. That's what that little pencil sign means. So we'll click that checklist. And again, he was traveling. He had him and two others. We're there for six hours, walked about five miles. Uh, so we'll go on down through here. Um, the surprise of the day, they saw a horned grave out there too. So uh, th this is what's good about writing notes for other people that, that they know where to look and stuff like that. There's this woodpeckers. You know, if you need a woodpecker too, he's, he's there five at different nesting sites. Um, let's go on down for Thonny Tory Robert. What is Mr. Bombassi have to say. Okay, the reason why he's counted all, he's, he said 51 is because he does a count of how many prothonotary warblers are in his, in his nesting boxes. So is this count done as part of a monitoring nest box trial trail dedicated for prothonotary warblers. Boxes not open as in AM, females are either laying eggs or incubating the eggs. So he didn't open them, but he has ways of counting them. Um, so he said he's seen 47, and so this is how, he, how he's counting them. He's seen 47 males come in and out of the nest boxes in that area and four females. So that's his way, that was his way of counting. Later on in the year, he'll actually open the boxes and see how many eggs and babies and stuff like that are in there too. So it's really fun to watch his data as he collects it. So, you know, that's, that's how the checklist is. You know, you can, you can view the checklist, and you can actually see the map and stuff like that. But we'll go ahead and close out of that. So again, that's how you find, that's how you use the um, eBird to, sp to look for a specific bird using the points in, in, the, in the data collection. So we'll go back to that. Again, I want to say eBird is a wonderful site. Uh, there are, there's tons of information on here, you know, all the way back to 1900 if you're looking for um, research. Um, that's what this has been set up to do. It's been set up for, for research, basically. Um, and I cannot recommend it enough for bird watchers, birders, anybody that's interested in birding to really look into eBird and what it does. This is, um, I'll look at their about page here. Cornell uh, Lab of Ornithology is the one that began this uh, a few years ago now, probably about quite a while now um, but here's their goal 
The goal is to maximize the utility and accessibility of the vast numbers of bird observations made each year by recreational and professional bird watchers, as amassing one of the largest, fastest growing data resources in existence. For example, there was 2000, in March 2012, there were 3.1 million bird observations across North America. See, that really, the, all this data really helps you in your bird watching. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. This, again, this is Steve Jones, SJ LaRue, SJ LaRue Photography, sjlaru.com. If you have any questions or anything like that, go ahead and add a uh, comment on the bottom of this video, and I'll either create a new video or address it right away. Uh, thank you, happy birding, and God bless.